Hey guys and welcome back. We're going to cover a few questions today off the mathematical knowledge portion of the ASVAB. Now remember, the mathematical knowledge portion is not so much word problems as it is straight mathematical content. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. Dividing fractions is actually a lot easier than multiplying mixed numbers like we had to do yesterday. So let's go ahead and take a look. If you're mul or dividing a fraction, here's what you do. Rewrite the first one, 4 over 5, and then you can actually flip this second fraction upside down. So that would be 10 over 7. We call this a reciprocal when you flip it upside down like that. Now, if you switch this to reciprocal, you can actually change this division to a multiplication, which is why this is much easier than all the work we were doing out there. So now we just need to multiply straight across, and 4 times 10 is going to give me 40 and 5 times 7 is going to give me 35. I noticed that that's not an answer over here, so we're probably going to need to reduce this in some way. The first thing I'm going to do is knowing that 40 is bigger than 35, I'm going to pull 35 out of this to give me one whole number, because that's going to give me 35 over 35. Well, 40 minus that 35 is going to leave me with 5, and then I still have my 35 on the bottom. And then I'm going to divide both the top and bottom by 5 to reduce this fraction. Well, 5 divided by 5 is just 1, and 35 divided by 5 is 7. Now, we still have that 1 out front for our mixed numbers, so that's going to be a final answer of 1 and 1 seventh, which it looks like is option C. Number 12 on the ASVAB says, find the value of negative 3a plus 4b if a is negative 2 and b is negative 3. Now, this is your standard just plug and chug question. So what we're going to be doing is taking this negative 2, plugging it in for the A, taking the negative 3, plugging it in for the B. Done. So let's start off. Order of operations as you multiply first. Remember, if you got a number right next to a letter, that means you're multiplying the 2. So we got negative 3 times this negative 2. Well, negative times a negative gives you a positive. 3 times 2 is 6, so that's going to give me positive 6. Then we got plus 4 times a negative 3. Well, positive times a negative is going to give me a negative and 4 times the 3 is going to give me 12. So what we're looking at here is 6 minus 12. Well, what's 6 minus 12? That's just going to end up giving me negative 6. That means that our final answer for question 12 is going to be C, negative 6. Um, looks like our next two, yeah. Today we're taking a look at number 13 and 14. It says in 13 and 14, you just have to solve for the variable indicated. So in this case, it says x divided by 4 is equal to negative 9. So this is a one-step equation. should only take you a few seconds to knock out. Whenever you want to move a number away from an x to get an x by itself, you do the opposite function. So in this case, we are dividing by 4, so the opposite of that would be multiplying by 4. Now you have to do it to both sides so that it will cancel out. So if I multiply this side by 4, that's what cancels that out. That's why we're doing it. But that means I have to multiply this side by 4 as well. So what is negative 9 times 4? That's going to give you negative 36. That's going to be our final answer, A. Let's take a look over here at this guy as well. 14 says... 2a minus 3. Let's just start solving here. First thing you're going to do is distribute the 2 to both of these guys inside. That's going to give us 2a minus 2 times 3 is 6, and that's equal to 14 minus 3a. Then I want to start getting things on the same side. So I see an a over here. I want to move that over to this a. Well, right now we're subtracting, so we're going to add that to both sides. So I'm going to add 3a over here, giving me 5 a. We still have that minus 6 and we still have that 14. I'm going to add 6 to both sides to go ahead and get it rid of it over here. So that's going to give me 5a equals 14 plus 6 is going to end up giving me 20. I'm multiplying by 5 right now, so divide both sides by 5. And that's going to give me that a is equal to 20 divided by 5, which is 4. Answer C. I always avoid questions about someone's wood, but here we are. A piece of wood that is 27 inches long is cut into two pieces such that one piece is twice as long as the other. Find the length of the shorter piece. So here's what I'm going to do here, all right? We have a piece of wood. It is a certain length. Let's call it X, all right? If I have that piece plus a piece twice as large as that, the two of those together is going to give me this 27 inches long, all right? So x plus the 2x will give me 27. Well, we can combine like terms here with the x, so that's going to give us 1x plus two more x's will be 3x. That's equal to 27. Well, now I can solve for x, so I just need to divide both sides by 3, 
and that's going to give me that x is equal to 9. Now, remember, x in this case was the smaller, the shorter of the two pieces, because the 2x was twice the size of that one. So that means the smaller one is 9 inches. Our final answer here is b. Number 16 might take some brain power. It says, if the sum of three consecutive integers is 57, then find the smallest of the integers. So what does it mean to be consecutive? That means it's one after the other one, like five, six, seven, or something like that. So in other words, we have a number here. We then have a, uh, another number right after it. So that would be what, x plus one. Um, and then we have another number after that one. So that's plus another one. So x plus two total, all right? So these would be our three consecutive numbers. The sum of them, so when we add them up, has to be equal to 57. So now we need to find the smallest one of those integers, which would be x. So in this case, we're just solving for x. So in this case, let's combine like terms. I have x plus x plus x, which will give me 3x. And then I have 1 plus 2, which is going to give me 3. And that's going to be equal to that 57. I'm going to subtract the 3 from both sides, giving me that 3x is going to be equal to 57 minus 3 is going to be 54. Then I need to divide both sides by 3 to get x by itself. So let's take a look here. How many times does 54 get divided by 3? Well, 3 goes into the 5 one time with 2 left over. And 3 goes into 24 a total of 8 times. So that means dividing 54 by 3 is giving me 18. The 3s over here cancel out, meaning that we have a final answer of x equal to 18, which is answer B. Number 17 says, if a number is added to twice the same number and the result is equal to 8 less than 5 times the number, what is that number? So let's start off breaking down to what each one of these things are talking about, and then we're going to put it all in one big equation. So it says, if a number is added to twice the same number, so let's just call that number x because we don't know what it is. We're going to add it to 2 times that number. That's what it means by twice the same number. And it says that the result, so that means it's equal to... It's saying that it's equal to 8 less than 5 times that number. Well, we're going to do 5 times that x, but what does it mean to be 8 less? That means you're going to be subtracting 8 from that. So here's our general equation here. x plus 2x equals 5x minus 8. Let's go ahead and combine like terms here. x plus 2x is going to give me 3x's, and then we have that 5x minus 8. Then if I go ahead and subtract the 5x from both sides, 3x minus the 5x is going to end up giving me negative 2x. And that cancels it out over there, giving us negative 8. If I divide both sides by negative 2, that's going to give me x equals positive 4. Because remember, negative and a negative is going to give us a positive. So our final answer here should be that x is equal to 4, which is answer A. Number 18 has an error on the test, but we're going to get back to that in a minute. This says to multiply 3x minus 7 times 4x plus 2. Now, this is a distribution question because what you're going to do is you're going to end up multiplying each of these terms by the other two terms in the other set. Same here, this one by these two, and then we'll combine everything together into one set. Now, with that said, let's go ahead and get started. 3x times 4x is going to give me 12x squared. Then, so that was this first one. Then from there, we'll do the 3x times the 2 to give me a positive 6x. Then from there, we're going to go ahead and do the negative 7 times the 4, which is negative 28x. Now, notice I put that one below it because these are my two terms with an x in it, so we're going to end up combining those two. Then I have a negative 7 times 2, which gives me negative 14. Now, I'm going to go ahead and combine these two right here, and that's where we're going to see the error for this question. Negative 28 and a positive 6 gives me negative 22x. So that's where those two. So we have 12x squared minus 22x minus 14. But if you notice here, all of these, these three answers right here, all have negative or positive 21. They must have had some error and they're adding here. I'm not so sure. Um, but that is incorrect. It should be negative 22, not 21. So if I'm looking, though, positive 12, negative 14, and a negative 22 means the answer here is probably intended to be B. 
factor 6x to the fourth power y cubed minus 3x to the third power y to the fifth. So here's the deal. When it says to factor something like this, it's looking for you to pull out the greatest common factor between these. So in other words, like what would go into both of these terms and we're going to pull it outside and then we'll see what's left over in the parentheses. So in this case, we're going to take each of these terms separately. So let's start with the actual numbers, 6 and 3. Well, both 6 and 3 are divis divided by 3 evenly. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. So let's go ahead and pull out a 3. And that tells us in our parentheses that we will have 6 divided by 3 is going to be left over with a 2. And 3 divided by 3 is going to be left over with a 1. But remember, we do have this minus right here, and this is still positive, so that means we're still going to have that minus on the inside. So we have minus that 1. That's not probably going to actually even show up. Let's see here. Next off, for the x values. Now, here's how this works. You look at the exponents, and you can essentially pull out as many as the highest or the lowest exponent is here. So I have x to the 3 and x to the 4th, so I can pull out at least three of them. So I'm going to put x to the 3rd right here. And that means on this one, there were four, so I took three out. I still have one of them left over. For this one, I took all three of them, so I don't have any left out. So then we go on to the y's. We have y to the 3rd, y to the 5th. Well, in this case, 3 is the lowest again out of 3 and 5, so we pull out y to the 3rd. And I'd be left with no y's in this first term, because we took out all three. And I'd be left with two of them in this second term, so I have the y squared. So it looks like our final answer should be x to the third, y to the third. So that looks like this guy right here. Let's double check the rest. 2x minus y squared, which is indeed what we have. So our answer here is a. Teach me how to factor. T -t Teach me how to factor. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. Factor x squared minus 2x minus 35. So in this case, we're factoring this down into two sets of parentheses like this. Essentially, it's the opposite direction from what we did up here where we distributed. Now we're essentially trying to find out, hey, what two things would distribute into this, like when you FOIL it out? So the way that you do this is you find two numbers that multiply to this number and add to this number. And that makes up your last two numbers in the sets of parentheses. Now, because there's no number out front, we know that the front for both of them is just going to be x, giving you x times x, which is x squared. So looking at these, what's two numbers that multiply to 35 and add to negative 2? Well, notice, looking through here, either 35 times 1 or 7 times 5 are our two options. In this case, 35 and 1 is never going to add or subtract to negative 2. That means we're looking at the 7 and 5 option. Here's the deal. If you do 7 minus 5, that gives you positive 2, and negative 7 plus 5 will give you that negative 2. So that means our final answer here is D. Hey guys, that's all we're going to cover for today, but remember, you can always click on any of these videos over here to help you keep studying for your next attempt on the ABVAC.